Hi everyone, it's Tony here from Ready Steady XL. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add polls like this to your meetings in Microsoft Teams. Please click like if you find this video useful. If you haven't already, start by setting up your meeting. So to do this, go into your calendar in Microsoft Teams, then click New Meeting, complete the fields, and then click Send. And then to add the poll, just go back into the meeting by double clicking here, and then click the plus sign to add the app. The app you need to add is Forms. If you don't see it here, then you can search for it. Let's click Forms, then click Add, and then Save and this will launch the Polls app. Now you can set up a poll before, during, or after your meeting, and then people can respond straight away after you've launched it. In this example, I'm gonna start by setting up a poll in readiness for the meeting that I'm gonna start. To create a new poll, I click here, and I simply add in my questions and answers. If you need to add further answers, then you can click Add Option, and if you want people to choose more than one answer, then select Multiple Answers. And this will make it multiple choice. Down here at the bottom, you've got some options to select. So the first one, do you want to share the results automatically after voting? So this will show the results straight away. I like to keep this one ticked because it helps to make the session more engaging so we can discuss the results. But there might be times like when you're doing a feedback poll that you don't want to show the results straight away. The next checkbox, do I want to keep the responses anonymous? So for this example, I'm going to tick this one. And then the last option there allows others to co-author. So do I want the other presenters to be able to edit this poll? With this box selected, they will only be able to edit the poll once it's been launched. When it's in draft mode, they won't be able to make any changes to it. For this example, I'm gonna deselect this box and I'm gonna click save. So here I have my first poll in draft mode and it's ready to launch so I could launch this before my meeting starts. But I'm not ready to do that just yet because I wanna add some more polls so to add more polls, I click here, create new. So here I have my polls created in readiness for my meeting. Now before I start my meeting, just to show you some of the other options that are available to you at this stage. So if I click on the drop down, I have options here to edit or delete this poll. I can also change the order of this poll by simply dragging. So if I don't want this poll here to be the second one, then I can just drag it over here. Now, if I was setting up these polls a few days in advance of my meeting, then that's fine, then I can click close and then come back to it on the day. But I'm ready to start this meeting now, so I'm gonna click join and then join now. And what we have now is this new icon for forms and all the presenters will see this. When I'm ready to start launching my polls, I just click here and here are my polls on the right and only me as a presenter can see this unless I'm sharing my screen. If I want to add a new one, I click here and you get the same screen as we saw earlier. I'm happy with these polls, so I'm ready to launch. So if I click launch, the poll is now live and all the attendees in this meeting will get this pop-up and a notification here too. Now when I say all people, people that are on their mobile phones using the Teams app, they won't get these notifications. Instead, they will need to go to the chat window and they'll be able to action the poll there. And how I've got this poll set up, when people click on the answers, and then click Submit, the results are shown straight away and the results are live, meaning people's responses will be shown straight away. Now, if I want to close this poll, then I can. So if I want to stop receiving responses, I click here on the drop down, and then click Close Poll. So once I've discussed the results of that poll, I can then move on to the next poll and I've got my Launch button. So that's dealing with a poll during the meeting. So how about a poll after the meeting? So let's come out of this meeting first. Then your next step would be to go into the meeting and then click the polls tab. If you hadn't created it already, you would click create new, complete the fields as before, and then click save. And then to send the poll out, I would click launch. So people will then access this poll by going to chat within the meeting. And they can do this within the meeting itself by clicking on the chat tab. And there it is there. Or the other way they can do it is click the chat icon on the left hand side, identify their meeting under the recent group, and it'd be here too in the chat feed. Now, when it comes to exporting the reports, you can do that and you can export it into an Excel spreadsheet. So let me show you how to do that. So you'd go back to your calendar, double click, and you would go to the polls tab, click export results. If you don't see export results, that means the poll is still open. So you can only export the results on a closed 
poll. So remember to close a poll, just click on the drop down and select close poll. Let's export the results. And when you export the results, it will go into the downloads folder and the title of the spreadsheet will be the name or the question of the poll. So the results go into the individual spreadsheets. So here's the results of the poll. And because for this one, I set it to be anonymous, it's not revealing the email address or name. But if I hadn't selected that box, here you would see everyone's email addresses and name. If you found this video useful, then please click subscribe to see future videos like this. And if you've got time, then please watch one of these videos here and I will see you in the next video.